Hey, Misty. Hey, Amaryllis. We're back. I'm so glad to be back. I'm so glad. I've missed you so much. (laughs) I've missed you. Can I tell y'all why? Listen, we said we were going to be more consistent. And we are being consistent. And we are being consistent because let me tell you something. COVID attacked my home again, you know. Yeah. Well, so Philip had it, and then Eli got it, and then, of course, it just it drains down to us, and so me and Avery had it. So I have just kind of been out of the loop for about a week, but I will say this strain has not been as bad. Yeah. Kind of like a little little cold kind of thing, yeah. but you still feel like crap. I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter what kind of sick you are. If you're sick, you just don't feel good. But um, I do have to do a I'm sorry corner. Okay. <laughs> We're getting, we're to, getting so frequent. To our sweet friend, <laughs> I told you I'm going to do one every episode. To our sweet friend, Elizabeth, who sent me the funniest email ever. Um, she had listened to one of our episodes where I talked about Eli when he cut his bangs off. Yep. And so she also had an incident where her son decided to do a little self haircut, and it was hilarious. The best part of that was that picture. That picture is Hilarious. Elizabeth, I wish you'd let us post that picture. Elizabeth. Holy smokes, it's You cured my COVID. Listen, we could put Eli's picture, juxtapose it next to him. Next to him and be like, when the holidays is rough. (laughs) (laughs) When I can't stand my bangs. Oh, when I'll do anything to get out of family pictures. (laughs) (laughs) He had already done family pictures, hadn't he? He had, thank goodness. Because now it's kind of, you know, because we did the whole buzz cut kind of thing. Yeah. And now it's just grown out to what I call um, psychosis length, where he just looks crazy all the time. Like, he just looks like a nut. So Whatever. He's adorable. He's cute, but boy, does he look crazy with that hair. Well, what have we got going on, sister? We've got some exciting news. (laughs) For us. For us. I don't know about y'all. I mean, the most exciting thing is we got to go discuss it at a new restaurant. If you live locally, yes. let's give them a shout out. You know what? Let's do that. Let's do it. Well, what? Okay. The name of this restaurant is, which by the way, uh, yesterday and Sunday, side note, sorry, let me just interrupt. You guys just go about your own business. We'll be right back. Okay. Uh, yesterday, Philip told our Sunday school class that you refused to go <laughs> to that restaurant with him. He told and me. And then you came with me. <laughs> he did. He did. And then I said, it wasn't that good. It is top 10, one of the best restaurants I've ever been to. It's good. But I'll tell you this. He would not enjoy it because... It's too fancy. It's... it's Well, not that it's too fancy. He likes a lot of food. And yeah, so, oh, yeah. like, they are... They're very good, but they give you a, a typical... A regular a portion. A regular portion size of food. And Philip likes when he goes to um, to order off the menu at any restaurant, he likes to say, what's the biggest? Yeah. He just likes a lot of food. Well, Rhett always orders, actually, two entrees. I know that about him. He'll do two entrees. I mean, those meat sticks. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, that one he had to order, too, because that was a tapas restaurant. So that wasn't enough. Anyway, the restaurant we're talking about is locally in Pelham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. It's called Frida Kahlo's Modern Mexican Cuisine. But it ain't like your regular Mexican restaurant. No, it is. It's not Tex-Mex. It is like for real fancy Mexican food. And it's in an old subway. (laughs) It is in an old subway. But you know what they say in Alabama? This hole in the walls. The, well, the only way it could be better is if it was in a gas station. Which is Fox Valley. Which is Fox Valley. That's true. But Fox Valley ain't what it used to be. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's delicious. I haven't been in a few years. It used to be one of our favorites. It's not but Fox Valley anymore, is it? I don't know. That I used think to be a better. changed it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry if you're not from this area. But, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're apparently <laughs> doing restaurant reviews now. Yeah. So, but anyway, Frida Kahlo. Delicious. Yeah. Go by there. Yeah, so we went there, and we had a little podcast meeting, yep. and you know, when when our friends, which are our, our friends that we like to pretend are our fans, yeah. um, when they- Our fans that we like to pretend are our friends. That's right. Um, when they ask for something, we listen, and Absolutely. everybody seems to feel like that we know a lot about everything, and we give great advice, and we just- are super smart and so (laughs) we have and attractive and attractive and so how could we not give the people what they want which is more we have to give them more misty we got to give them more and not just documentaries no but we need an avenue to talk about things that you guys want to talk about because some of y'all 
just listen because we're just nerds and that's fun. But something other than documentaries are, are what you're asking for. We've got a lot of wisdom to give. We do. We do. And a lot of experience yeah. under our belts. And so yeah. um, coming soon to the Doc Network <laughs> <laughs> that I just made up. Will be our new Patreon channel called Off the Dock. Isn't that clever? Misty came up with that. <laughs> Who would have thought? Off the Dock. So it will be basically everything but documentaries. That's right. That's right. And we so we'll give life advice. We'll give life we advice. We'll have hot takes. Uh huh. We'll uh, have fact, story can, hour. Story time. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Boy, do we have stories. Wow, do we have stories. Wow. Uh, you know, we're going to also we might do, We might do like some extra bonus material where we're recording before we get started because what we say before we hit record on this on these mics yeah y'all just got a promise not to tell you cannot tell our pastor don't tell our pastor don't tell our husbands yeah okay so you might they're definitely not going to subscribe list after yeah. that's right yeah yeah um hey we may even venture out into doing some lives so you guys oh, yeah. get to experience some of our other talents which <laughs> there are many so many. So many. So many. And I mean, what do we put on this earth to do other than entertain? <laughs> I mean, mothering I mean, and all that kind of stuff. Whatever. But for real. Jobs, yeah. What what's our real gift? <laughs> Talking. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> and laughing at stuff. And laughing at ourselves. <laughs> so um, coming soon. We're not sure soon. when, but yeah. pretty soon we're we're trying to get everything together. We're so. gonna start recording some content and then when it is live, we will let y'all know. Yes. And I don't want to say her name, but my sweet friend, I'll just say Jay, she knows who she is. Mm-hmm. She somehow, I don't know how, found us. Before we before even we even released said our it. name or anything. And I didn't realize I had already published it, which, by the way, I'm, don't go on there right now and commit to anything because there's no content on there. Actually, go on there and commit right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's really going to give us an incentive to keep going. But yeah. But our sweet friend Jay, she just went ahead and signed up Enjoy. for it. And I was, I've got to call her. So let this be our official phone call. Jay, I don't want to say her name because I don't know if she wants Jay, to know. Jay, you're getting a welcome package. <laughs> and let me <laughs> tell you, a kiss. y'all aren't going to know exactly what our welcome package includes, but it's worth <laughs> an, <laughs> an estimated at least $17, $1,700. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's perceived value, not actual value. Just my value. Yeah. yeah. Perceived. Yeah, perceived. Okay. You and the words. All right. So bottom line, you guys are feeling better. We are feeling better. We have yeah. exciting things coming on on the dock. Yep. And we probably went through about five documentaries before we settled <laughs> on the one. <laughs> we swore we were going to watch a bunch of them until we settled on this one. Well, I started watching Pharma Bro. Right, which is on Hulu, which is about Mar- Martin Scarelli, who, if well, you follow I news, never said that. I know it's a terrible last name. If you follow the news, he's an awful, awful man. He bought a pharmaceutical company and got the rights to this pill that used to cost like seventeen bucks, and then he started ca- charging like nine hundred dollars a pill for it. I mean, what? some insane. Yeah, he, he yes, incredibly. Netflix insane. made a movie, and with he Mark never. Wahlberg he was like, "Well, I'm that. still going to do it. It's mine." Yeah. And so he ended up. He's in jail on securities fraud or something. I don't know what, but <clears throat> good. I, it, we started watching that, but and I thought that would be so entertaining because that dude is such <laughs> a crazy person. He's such a freak show. Yeah. And I was bored to tears. I was like, I cannot make this work, Misty. Let's I mean, do another that one. just proves that we care about what what y'all watch. We don't want you. We don't want you to waste boring. your time. Yeah. Then what was the next one that I said? Oh, Misha and the Wolves. Uh-huh. Now, that's a good one. And we should yeah. do that one at some point. We will, yeah. But it was kind of like a, um, <clears throat> it was about the Holocaust, and we were like, too soon? Too soon. Yeah, too yeah. soon. Um, but it's a fantastic documentary. It's on Netflix. So right. we have finally settled on what I think is, was meant to be. Chicken people. Chicken people. It's a good one. 2016, streaming on Prime. Is it 2016? Yep, five years ago, six years ago. But it's not been released until recently, right? No, it's been on Prime forever. I saw it a couple Are years ago. Are you serious? Yep. I did not know that because I've just now seen people posting about watching yeah. it. Oh, my gosh. It is something else. It's something. I it love is, it. it. It's a feel-good documentary-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing sad about it. Right. 
I mean, unless you talk about these people's lives. Right. They do have some sad lives. Hey, can we give a shout out real quick to our first, um, well, not our first, but one of our first voicemails that we got. Oh, yeah. From our friend. We can't play it for you. Her voice is too sexy. Oh, my gosh. She started talking and I was like, girl, you going to make me want to invite you on this podcast. <laughs> Because that voice is so alluring. <laughs> Her name's Kathleen. Thank you, Kathleen. And Kathleen, you have a great voice. We got your suggestion. She thinks, and you know who else also gave us this suggestion was our old friend Benji, Queen, uh, um, uh, Queen of Versailles. You know, it's you know what I what well what I still call that or how I pronounced it, Queen of Versailles. Stop it. I did. <laughs> when you said Versailles, I was like, oh, I'm glad I didn't say it out loud. <laughs> because I kept I've seen it so many times yeah. and like just the. Just like the cover photo makes me want to watch it, but yeah. I, ne- I haven't watched it. Have you never it. heard of Versailles, period? Like the I Palace ha- of Versailles? Well, yeah, I have. And so yeah. that's why I felt extra stupid when you said it. And I was like, oh, I've been <laughs> saying i got to watch that Queen of Versailles. <laughs> <laughs> like a nerd. Fun fact, I went to the Palace of Versailles when I was in college. Of course you did. Fun fact, you've seen one palace, you've seen them all. Fun fact, I've never been to a palace. <laughs> Except for my house. <laughs> Except for the Pancake <laughs> Palace in Gulf Shores, Alabama. <laughs> And let me tell you, did it please? <laughs> did it pay off? It sure did. <laughs> Loved it. All right, so chicken people. Let's chicken talk about chicken people. people. Now, listen, there's going to be a there's spoiler alert because we're going to talk about what happens on this and how oh, it ends yeah. and the whole thing. So well, if you're super out- interested in saving how who wins this chicken show, then please do not listen to us right now. Emerald, it's been out six years. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think the mystery is yeah. solved. <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, some people may be like you, where you're like, is that six years old? I swear <laughs> I thought it was brand Meanwhile, new. Meanwhile, half these chickens are no longer these alive. These chickens have been eaten. Yeah, they've, they've been turned into fried chicken, just like the people were like, yeah, we'll eat our chickens. Yeah, we'll eat our chickens. <laughs> well, let me tell you how I knew from the word go that this was going to be a documentary that I enjoyed, was when it opened up, and there was a lovely man standing there, and... um he said that he loved to sing to his chickens. Yes. Oh, yes. And he said, look, I think it calms them. Maybe it doesn't. But then he began to sing one of the best songs ever written. Someday when I'm awfully low. You sound a lot like him. I'm trying to. <laughs> and the world is cold. You sound like you belong in Branson. Like I do. Brian. The elderly entertainment capital of the world. <laughs> so, there were two people in this doc. There were three main people in this documentary. Yes. Two of them were named Brian. <laughs> they sure were. <laughs> I was getting so confused. Every time somebody would say Brian, I was like, well, who are we talking about? Well, so I finally, when I was writing my notes, I had to say Brian the engineer, Brian from Branson. I said young Brian and old Brian. No, that's that's good, too. That's good Not too. that you're old, old Brian, but you're older than young Brian. He is now. It's six years later. Well, he probably is, but anyways. So, hey, I have a little experience with chickens. Do you really? Oh, yes. When I was, like, five years old, mm-hmm. I don't know why this happened. I don't know why this happened. Five or six years old. My parents bought me and my middle sister. I don't even think my little sister was alive yet. Uh, Chicks for Easter. Chick- two chickadees, one each. For Easter? No, it wasn't for Easter. I just think... I don't know. I have to ask my mom. I really have no recollection why they bought us these chickadees. They just said, what do so we listen, buy these rich children that have everything? Well, I was, we were not rich at that point. Oh, okay. We're not rich well, now. Maybe it, was not, <laughs> maybe it was not pets. Maybe that was to raise to eat. No, well, I, mean, we were, I don't know why. I don't have any idea why. Now, listen, my mom grew up on a ranch. She knows all about cattle ranching and all that stuff. So, anyway, so they bought us these two little chickadees, and I remember them clear as day. They were these cute little yellow chickadees. They're so cute. So cute. So oh. one day, we were outside, oh God. and what happened? <laughs> you have to remember, I was not any older than six. I was probably five, and my sister was three. Oh, Lenny. So she... I feel a mice and men moment coming so on. So she grabbed her chicken and tried to give him water. Oh, jeez. No, that was me that did that. Tried to give him water, and I put him under the faucet, and I turned it right on. (laughs) (laughs) That did not. That did not go well. I think he did survive, but I think he almost drowned. Did you not perform chicken CPR? I did not. But listen, let me tell you, this gets worse. My sister, we were outside with the chickadees. Uh huh. 
My sister's at the time we did not speak English. At the time we only spoke Spanish. Oh well. So which explains why I'm about to do an exclamation in Spanish. Okay. We're outside. The little chickadees are out there. She turns around and she goes, Una cucaracha, a cockroach. And she stepped on the chicken. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. How big were your cockroaches? (laughs) Well, I think she just saw something out of the corner of her eye and just stepped on it. And um, at the time, we were living in Mexico. Like, we were, my dad went to medical school in Mexico. So that's like where we were. Were they breed cockroaches as big as a chicken? Apparently, apparently. Now, I'm laughing at this. I realize it's a horrific thing because my mom tells the story of coming out and seeing what remained of this chicken. And it was not a good thing. And it was, I mean, it was horrific. horrific. That is my experience with chickens. Well, let me tell you something. Part of this documentary, they do a whole bathing series of these chickens. <laughs> in the and, sink. In the sink. And they did say that they have seen people resuscitate their chickens because okay. they've gotten waterlogged and they couldn't breathe. Now, I have a story. We've never owned chicks, but we did own hamsters at one time. It's very similar. Very similar, um, especially in size. And yeah. Avery had this little How ham- big are your hamsters? They were oh, from chicken, similar size of chickadees. To I was a, like, to, to a, a chick. chicken? Yeah, no, to a <laughs> If we have hamsters the size of a chicken, that's a gopher. Um, <laughs> which I can tell you another story about my daddy fighting off a gopher rat. Okay. That got in his, <laughs> Let's not get distracted. That got in his bedroom drawer Let's not get time. distracted. Um, anyway, Avery had this little hamster, and its name was Blossom, and she loved it so much. And... I don't know if you know a lot about hamsters, but they don't live. I know nothing about hamsters. They don't live very long. Like two years is like elderly for them. Um, you know, these are pocket pets. And so you pay $10 for them at the pet store. So she loved this little hamster. And it had lived a good, a really long time for our house. And so, um, but they developed something they call wet tail, which is Gross. basically just hamster diarrhea. Okay. Oh, fun. They just poop themselves to death. Okay, fun. I mean, I've been there. I felt like I was going to poop myself to death, but. This one really did. Misty tail. Yeah. So she wakes up this morning and she's like, this blossom's not doing well. And I was like, okay, well, like we knew it wasn't going to last very long. I'm not, I'm not an animal person. So I'm just like, praise God, I don't have to smell this thing anymore. Um, But she was upset about it. And so she's like, we have to call a vet. And I was like, baby, they're like 10 bucks. Like they're going to charge us 50 at the vet. I don't really see that paying off. Well, Philip is a softy, and I've already told you I feel like he is a member of PETA and just not telling me. And not so that he's anything wrong with that. so he's like, call the vet and see. Okay, they're only special vets that deal with what they call pocket pets. Okay, okay. which are I've ham- never heard that phrase. Hamsters, gerbils, things that would fit in your pocket. Okay, okay. And so I call, and they're like, oh yeah, it's going to be a fifty dollar fee, and so. Avery's distraught. She's like, I can't go to school. I I need to stay and I need to nurse this pet back because she's an animal lover. So I said, okay, well, I've got to take your brother to school. When I get back, we'll take it to the vet and spend our $50 to hear him tell us it's going to die. But um, on the way back, I had seen she had called my phone. And so I didn't get it, but I, I got her a little message and she was like... I think she's go. I think she's going. I just I don't know what to do. And so I was like, Oh my gosh! So I called her back and I said, Hey, are you okay? And she goes, It's okay. I had to do um, a couple of chest compressions. <laughs> when was this? <laughs> this was seventh grade. Seventh grade. Okay. She said, I've had to do a couple of chest compressions, and I did a couple of breaths into her no. airway. <laughs> And she seems to be doing better. And I said, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, I've already picked out a box for this thing. And I said, okay. Um, literally 10 minutes later, she called me back, and I answered the phone. And I said, hey. And she said, I lost her. Oh, no. And I said, oh, baby, I'm so sorry. And she was distraught. But I was like, hey, you got to go to school. Like, <laughs> It's time to stop. I mean, reading. Alabama is not – they don't play about them uh, truancy rules. And so I said, you got to go to school. So I gave her till after lunch. I took her and got her lunch. Well, she comes to, I go to check her in. And the lady's like, um, can you give me a reason for her check-in? And I said, <laughs> I said, um, we lost a pet this morning, um, death of a pet. And she goes, oh, a cat or a dog? And Avery said, a hamster. <laughs> and the woman laughed. <laughs> like, 
And Avery begins to sob again. And I was like, well, I'm leaving this with you. Goodbye. <laughs> and I went and got in my car. But yeah, you can give a, a chick or a, or a hamster CPR if you didn't know. Well, so, there you have it. You know. Um, but, but this documentary here is about people who show chickens. It's about people. It's not about these chickens necessarily. It is more about the people. Wow. Okay, so we meet Sherry. Sherry is a homemaker, Mm -hmm. and she's in Indiana, right? I believe. Yeah. And she's got, like, I counted uh, 14,000 children. I mean, she has so many children. Oh, my goodness. She has so many children. But Sherry has the cutest of the chickens. So Those silkies make me want to have Those silkies, I was like... Okay, so I sent a, I sent Amaryllis this quiz to oh, find I out. Oh, I forgot to take the quiz. You son of a gun. I'm sorry. I forgot. <sighs> well, you've you know, ruined this we'll put, podcast. We'll, we'll put it on hold in a minute, and I'll take it. Um, so basically, it was a little like a, a BuzzFeed quiz. I, I had to make Greek meatballs so that you could eat when you got here. You did. Um, P.S. They were cold. She don't have a microwave. But um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but it would have been better if they did I, I appreciate it. But... Um, these silkies look like they're wearing, like, fur hats and coats. They look Russian. They're so <laughs> cute and snobby looking. Yeah. Like, they have turquoise beaks and ears. I have seen this documentary before, and I had forgotten how many different breeds of chickens there are. Well, I went through this quiz, and I tried every which way to get myself to come up as a silky. And it just would not do it. What'd you come up I as? I came up as the ugliest chicken you could find. Is it that kind that they would use, like, in between... Um, scenes, and it was that chicken with those really long legs. It was no, it was the it was this brown chicken, and uh, I was like, that does not even look like me. Okay, it's called a Rhode Island Red, is what they said I was. Um, it says you are social, somewhat assertive, much like this bird. You are probably a great leader and face life with a positive attitude, which is all correct. I was going to say that's not wrong. It's not wrong, but this chicken is not cute, and I'm cute. So I wanted to be a silky. I could not get myself to be a silky on that quiz, so I got kind of mad. But um, yeah, Sherry raises the most beautiful bird when well, it comes to chickens. She does both, chickens. right? Black and white silkies. Yes, but um, to. To get them ready for the show, I didn't realize, like, you have to bathe them and blow dry them. And it's almost like a toddler's and tiaras of chickens. Okay, Misty, I've just taken this quiz. Okay. And I am a Rhode Island Red. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> you are social and somewhat assertive, much like this bird. You're probably a great leader and face live with a life with a positive attitude. That's why we get along so well. We're the same kind of chicken. We're the same kind of chicken. Amazing. My word. We're not, I mean, we're much more attractive than these chickens. That's true. They're not cute. Anyway, um, so, yeah, those silkies are gorgeous. Yeah. They're, but let And me, she gives, I love how, like, there's a thing called chicken grooming. Mm-hmm. And they, like you said, they put, like, this woman takes them into her kitchen. I saw her take them into her kitchen and put them under the sink. Uh-huh. And bathe these chickens. Bathe the chickens. And blow dry and comb their hair mm-hmm. with an actual comb. Oh, yeah. And I'm surprised that she didn't put, you know. They put shine spray on them. It's crazy. They do all kinds yeah, of stuff. Cr- now, they look good. They look gorgeous. They do. But now, what I love most about Sherry is um, Sherry basically traded an alcoholism <laughs> for, chickens. for chickens, which I would have never thought of. I mean. Here's the thing about that. If you have an addiction, you're going to have an addiction to something. To something, yeah. You know, they say if you have people who have weight loss surgery, lots of those people turn to alcohol because they can't do, they can't can't eat eat. anymore. Right. Um, And so, and that's true. I mean, Mm -hmm. like if you give up alcohol, you're going to find something else because you just have to have something to, unless you've worked, you know, that's all psychological and emotional stuff that you got to work out. But yeah, she gave up the bottle for a bunch of silkies. Hey, and let me tell you, her children were happy about it. They yeah. were like, look, we would much rather see her caring for thousands of chickens than we would to be drunk in the bed by dinner time. My favorite is how they kept offering her alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> she killed me when they were having that barbecue and her husband said, what kind of what kind of brats do y'all want? Like, we got cheese brats, we got this kind of brat, we got beer brats. And she said, well, I can't have that. And they were like, are and they you were sure? Like, they're going to be delicious. They were like, so. they're gonna, the 12-year-old was like, I'll take one. Yeah. <laughs> and her daughter was like, Mom, the, like, the alcohol burns off when you cook it. And she was like, well, I'm not having it. I was like, well, that, Sherry is a Baptist. Good for you. Through and through. She said, I'm not having that beer right. Forget it. She's a Christian 
unless chicken. we're having it on the back porch, and then I'll have one. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard. I've heard. You've heard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she. So she is. Um, and I don't remember how many chickens she had, but it sure as heck wasn't as many as Brian the engineer had, which was literally he has hatched literally thirty thousand chickens, and he has numbered every single one of them he's got their genealogy and he says he can remember their faces because after all misty mm-hmm. you know a thousand people probably well and yeah you remember their names and you know their faces well yeah it's the same with chickens he's got them in his head brian's a hatchaholic <laughs> if you didn't know <laughs> he is a self he said, yeah. self-proclaimed hatchaholic he breeds and incubates chicks and to get his best one he said he had to go through 15 generations oh yeah to get him to where he he needed to be and he it was so funny like watching him go through these chickens because he'd be like well this one's got a bad head (laughs) (laughs) i was like now this one's for lunch now these chickens y'all claim are your children but like i've never gone through and been like avery well you got a a rough looking thumb so Uh, Oh, no. He sat down with his family and had chicken noodle soup and said, thank you to the chickens who gave us this food. Thank you to this chicken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, Brian, Brian, the engineer, um, I feel like this is really, I mean, this is really fulfilling something for him. Can I tell you something? You know, I love to diagnose somebody. Yeah. 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 And I have two children on the spectrum. Oh, he's for, I do not have children on the spectrum, but I could see this a mile away. Brian, I need you to go talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you need a diagnosis, Brian. Well, he has such an amazing brain, okay? Yes. Like, this guy... He's chicken rain man. He's something else. I mean, like, just the way that he looks at the, the genetics and the breeding of these chickens and their feathers and, like, um, things um, about chickens so I have methodical. never known. Um and so much so that he can only do his real job part time because he has to take care of those chickens. <laughs> and everything he does, he wants to do perfectly. And he said that's why he can't have a relationship or be married because he can't do that perfectly. Well, he's had one girlfriend, and she was also a chicken lady. Let me tell you, she was the cock of the walk <laughs> because that woman had the most beautiful chicken hair. I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> the <laughs> it was hard to tell her from the chickens. Did she not resemble a chicken? <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. This woman is lovely. She is a pretty woman, but like her features, like she has a very kind of pronounced, sharp nose, and like it's that hair. That it's hair that was hair. literally feathered oh, in yeah. such a way. So, Brian, let's talk about Brian and this woman because. He very clearly carries a torch for her. Why won't he marry her? He Well, maybe she doesn't want to marry him. Well, why not? She's at a chicken show. She, <laughs> it's not like she's out. They could show chickens together. I mean, you Well, he was so... He, he, he seems lovely. He was friendly with all these chicken people. Like, he was right at home. I saw those chicken people. Brian ain't a bad catch no, at that show. No, he is top He's, notch. Brian, you, you handsome. As my husband says, he is a chicken show 10. Yeah, Brian. <laughs> How about he put, says that about different. Like if he sees if he sees people on television, uh-huh. they're like, "Oh, she's from England. Oh, she's in England eight. Oh, uh, yeah, he's or, a chicken show ten. He's for a sure. chicken show ten, and yeah. he winning trophies. And yes, medals? he is a chicken show ten. Girl, for somebody sure. gonna snatch him up? Yes, and, but he so obviously carries a torch for this lady. Like he was so awkward around her, and he kept trying to convince the camera people that they're just friends. We're just really good friends. We're just friends. I mean, we, we do have this friends. lovely formal night cruise picture that i've shown you <laughs> we bought the eight by ten we it cost us 38 dollars. i did and then, yes yeah. and and i still have it on framed my on my mantle but it's fine yeah. we're just friends we're just friends yeah we're just friends and i did want her to stand next to me during judging <laughs> but it's okay it's nothing and he was so pumped to see her and so I know. it was like so chicken I think, love. listen brian i'm certain you'll be listening to us soon yeah please Please do something about this and get together with this woman y'all are meant to be. Absolutely. You're meant to be. Absolutely. Her name was Rachel, maybe, I think. Oh, I don't like that name. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Well, it's Phillip's longtime ex-girlfriend before me. I don't like that name. Rachel. Okay. 
Raquel. We'll call her Raquel. That's Raquel. Spanish. Raquel. That's her chicken name. <laughs> their chicken name um now also um i mean i think raquel looked like a gorgeous silky a a black silky a black silky with that dark hair um but you know what um brian taught me something during this probably the engineer the engineer because i've always wondered like how they could tell if a if a chicken egg was fertilized before it hatched like Oh, my gosh. How would you figure that out? Well, he held it up to a light, and he was like, oh, well, there's blood vessels in this one, so it's fertile. It's called candling. Why do you know stuff I don't I don't. Know? I, listen, I, I learned it on chicken people. Oh, okay. Yeah. And candling is not a candle. It's just putting it up to a to flashlight. To a light. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, that's so neat. Yeah. But let me tell you, um, there's some hard lessons learned in cultivating chicks. Yeah. How about if they can't get out of their shell all the way, they'll just kill them. Did you see that one chick? No, I it wasn't that. That I don't baby think it was... does not look that bad. Get it out of its shell and give it a fight and is a chance. Is that what it was? Like, I just thought he didn't survive. I just thought it was not a good little chicken. This is a different Brian, and we'll talk about him later on. Brian from Branson. Brian from Branson, the singer. He had this little chick, and they had all hatched. Well, one had a shell stuck on its butt. And he said, well, this one's not going to make it. Dad, will you take care of that one? Dad, will you kill this one for me? And <laughs> I was like. Had, it was so, it was like chicken mafia. Dad, oh, Dad, will you take I care mean, of the thing one? was still alive and looking around. And I was like, can y'all not crack its butt off? He and was like Tony Soprano with that chicken. And he was like, bada give it a bada little, bada Give it a little bit of water and see what happens. Yeah. My gosh, they were brutal. Um, but now, Brian, the engineer, his parents had a very um, interesting job growing up. Which I thought was cool. Remind me. Uh, so his parents were drag racers growing up. And yeah, so basically that's how he got into being an engineer was his dad d- taught him how to build engines. Can I tell you, I literally fast forward through that part because I was so uninterested in it. Oh, I thought it was so interesting. So they were drag racers and obviously he gets his very intelligent brain from his father and mother. And what they figured out was if his mother would drive the race car, she would win because she's lighter. (laughs) Okay. And she would go faster. And so they built the engines, and his mother drove the cars in the drag races. Nice. And won. And so he ended up becoming um, an engineer, and he built, like, engines, and he works in tractor pulls. I mean, I knew he built engines. He's yeah. a, he's an engine engineer. Engine engineer, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, um, but they still seem to be really... Which tells me he's not a stupid man. Like, no. this is a really smart man. Yeah, and these chicken people are not dumb. No. They don't just breed chickens because they don't know how to do anything else. They have like... their own language, Misty. I mean, when they were talking about the different breeds, the different categories... The feathers. Things like candling and the feathers. Yeah. Um... There was like, I didn't understand the, the any words yeah. and the things on the it. combs, the the standard of perfection. There's a book just like there is with dogs. There's a standard of perfection. This was new to me. Yes, and you it, know, do- dogs have that. Like the AKC, they have a book, and they're like, it's a standard of perfection. It, like a poodle has to be certain, a certain height, or in your like. I used to have Maltese mm-hmm. dogs, and um, the standard of perfection is. Totally white, no curls on its um, fur. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times these little white dogs get tear stains. So you might have seen white dogs with like little red stains on their f- eyes. Mm-hmm. That's a flaw. And that will not get you into a show. Can I tell you how angered I was by this book as a special needs advocate? Oh, the, the, the standard s- of perfection. Standard yes. of perfection. Yes. Like <laughs> one of the things Branson Bryan said was, I love chickens because they never judged me. Dude, that's all you do to your chickens. (laughs) Judge them. I mean, let this thing come out with a cockeyed toenail. You will eat eat it It, for dinner. I mean, could you imagine judging humans in that way? Well, I think that's the point. They're not humans. But they they did not treat them like... One thing that. that I wrote down in my notes was they handled these... Sorry. That was Misty. I'm sorry. That was Misty. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that I wrote down was they handled these animals like they weren't living. 
Like they were just like they had maybe painted a picture and they were trying to judge the picture on the artist. Oh yeah. Um, because that's what they can, they almost as geneticists, they're geneticists. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're chicken engineers. If yeah. you will. And they were acting as if these chickens were works of art. And even Brian, the engineer, was like, you know what? I did not get the perfect chicken this time, but I'm going to work on it. I've got a couple that I think I'm going to mate, and I think that they can really bring me a perfect chicken. And I mm-hmm. thought, I there's something skeevy about that. There's something gross about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I don't think these people do that for that because of that. No, they're, they're not abusing and they're chickens. Not, and they're also not people who seem to be perfectionists in their own appearance okay not saying that they don't take care of themselves but I'm saying there's regular people they don't look like they're perfectionists about themselves but the thought of like genetically creating something that has no imperfections is so odd and weird to me especially because I think you and I both appreciate uniqueness yeah and so like when I watched this I was like that would be so not fun to me to feel like I had to create something that was perfect but to them that's such that's the challenge I think it's such a waste where there's I mean this man had hatched 30,000 chickens oh yeah what does he do with these 30,000 no wonder he can't have kids good lord how many would he have to make to get the right one can you imagine the smell one mile outside of this guy's house well he'd have a fit if he saw our dogs because every one of them got a special need (laughs) Marley got half a ear because <laughs> it got bit off, and then Milo's head exploded that one time. Oh my god! And then do not tell that story. That's poor, gross. poor little Max. You know he's yeah. Philip said he's not bred correctly, <laughs> and his little ears don't stand up, and he's got yeah. a limp. Yeah, but, I, it, but we love him because of that. Well, I just thought I I felt there was there was something weird inside me because. Just because they're living, they're living beings. Mm-hmm. You know, are we are we hatching 30,000 chickens? Now, I know he's not been to 30,000 shows. I know he's not entered 30,000 chickens into a show. And I certainly know that he hasn't won 30,000 times. So, no. of the, let's say, let's be generous and say he went to 50 shows. Mm-hmm. I mean, where's the other 29,950 chickens? It's almost like playing God. Yes. It yeah. really made me feel really skeevy. You know, I'm not part of that world. It could be that they have things that they do with these chickens. I don't know, but they're also breeding. It's not like they're breeding chickens that you that that are bred in farms that people eat yeah. either because these are specific breeds. I don't imagine that there are silky farms where you're selling those to Whole Foods so people can but eat those. But surely they got to do something with them. They can't keep them all. Well, exactly. That's what they I'm saying. Die. Are they euthanized? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It but she, me but Sherry seemed really sad when hers got sick and died. So yeah, and yeah, they have a was. lot of them. So maybe they do. Well, keep she them did have die. a lot. She certainly didn't have thirty thousand of them, and That's and true. he doesn't either. He's just has hatched that many. Well, over I don't the years. even know what the lifespan of a chicken is. I don't know. I have no idea how long they know. would actually live, but um, I don't know. I just felt weird. Yeah, I felt really weird about it, and then you meet Brian from Branson. Who I thought was a performer, but apparently he's a photographer. <laughs> he actually is a performer, <laughs> but he's a performer. He. Also, as a photographer, because he's not getting a lot of gigs. Ching, ching. Okay. Um, And Brian, like most musicians, is living a dream that just isn't coming true. (laughs) So, um, and that's not to say anything. Brian, I think I have the best singing voice in the world. But am I, did I make it to Nashville? No, I didn't. No, And at a certain age, you just have to say, okay, well, I'm I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to raise chickens. Yeah. Okay. And sing to them. Yeah. And see what happens. Because your mom and daddy can only go to so many shows. Well, my favorite thing that he said was, you know, I I uh, have enough of an audience that I could move back home. Now, he's not from – he lives in Branson, and that's where he works, but he's from Anna, Illinois. And I don't know the distance between the two, but he'll go back and forth every now and then. Well, my favorite is that he said Branson is where entertainers go to die. Yes. <laughs> and he said, and I could go back to Anna. I've got a built-in audience. So what does he do? He goes he back. He goes back to Anna, mm-hmm. and he has eight people in his audience. My goodness. <laughs> was so sad wow. it was so sad I'm like but listen Brian as a little church singer here we have all been there we've been we there we have all been there absolutely we've Did, had big audiences and then we've had where people are just like one oh, time it's them no one time know. I sang on the back of a trailer in Bessemer and had a bee go up my skirt and sting me in the middle of a song Stop okay it. And is I, that true that's the gospel 
Oh, yeah. my gosh. And I had to come off and degrade myself to get this bee out of my skirt. <laughs> It was horrible. They anyway. Some of you were singing a gospel song, too. I was singing a gospel song <laughs> with my gospel group. So, with your gospel with group? With my gospel group, and the bee got me. But <laughs> thankfully, most people were interested in the barbecue being served. So, Fantastic. You yeah. Know, yeah. I don't think many people saw, Fantastic. but nobody got saved that day. So, he goes back to Anna, and he is now... Towards the end... Now, the beginning of this documentary is really all about the chickens, it's all about the process of grooming them and raising them and hatching them. Let me tell you where Brian missed his calling. He should have been a toddler's and Tierra's parent. Oh, yes. Because he was such a stage mom. <laughs> like, yes. at those chicken shows, he was talking mad smack. Yeah, he was. He was like, really? Her feathers? <laughs> what? No, the best was Your when he didn't win. does not look like mine. No, now listen, he got a raw deal because that judge picked up that chicken of his so and that, said, look at this Look at this comb. The standard of perfection says that it's supposed to be, the first three combs are supposed to be standing up, and then the back of the comb is supposed to be leaning forward but not mm -hmm. covering the eye. Now look, this is exactly how it's supposed to be, but it's too perfect, it's so I can't let it win. It's too perfect. <laughs> Surely, there's been some comb plastic Brian surgery. Brian Branson, you are damned if you do, damned if you don't. He can't win. I'm so sorry. He cannot win. So, but the best part of that to me was when he's talking to the camera again and he goes, you know what? I don't come here for the win. That's right. <laughs> I, come I love here. my chickens, whether they win or not. That's right. Well, he lost his main job for the chickens. He did. He did. And uh, his parents said that was concerning. Yes. But who knew if you missed two shows that you lose your job? Now, did you get the sense that their his parents love him so, so much and want to support him, but they're just like... Brian, I've not got again. A, I've got a sense that Brian is an only child. Oh, he's definitely an only child. And I've also got a sense that his parents are exhausted of him. <laughs> <laughs> they want to get a regular job. They are precious. but And he even said it. He was like, my parents support me yeah. to oh, the end. Yeah. And I, I'm, I should be repaying them for that, but I'm not there yet. Yeah, Brian, you got to get a gig, yeah. okay? That's not carrying a surfboard and singing music from the 60s. <laughs> Or taking blurry photos, because I saw you get in trouble for that. Yep, yep, yep. Your job. <laughs> blurry photos. Yep. Hey, could we get some photos that are not blurry? Um, <laughs> and I love, your, I love your love for chicken, but you're either going to have to start selling some of them chickens, or yep. you're going to have to do something if you're going to get your own farm. Yeah, you get the sense that they are, they want, they do, of course, love him, and they want to support him in everything, and they're just like. Did you get a sense that maybe. Also, they're, they're old, and so they were like, we're not going to be here forever, Brian. We're so tired. Yeah. Did you also get the sense that maybe he had tried to raise some chickens in that apartment? Because he said with real, <laughs> he said with real conviction, you cannot raise chickens in an apartment. You I'm know what? I didn't think about it. But I'm gonna have to get you're myself. Wrong. I'm gonna have to get myself his farm. And I thought you've gotten a couple of notices on your door. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Brian, it smells like chicken over here. <laughs> not the good kind. That patio is not built for pens. Yes. You know what? You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong. I didn't think about it, but you're not wrong. Yeah. But aside from the people that we meet in Chicken People, um, you do meet a couple of other ones. Um, that you don't really know by name, but they're kind of just talking back and forth. Um, yeah. There's a set of twins that scared me. Oh, my gosh. They look like poltergeists. They frighten me. No, that, not poltergeists. What's the, what's the movie where the girl's in the, um, in the, the television? The little dresses? Like oh. the long hair. That's and, poltergeist. No, no, no. There's another one. Uh, maybe she's not in the television. Oh, my gosh. The blonde kid that looks at the television? No, no, not scared. the blonde kid. I'll think of it. The ring. The, the ring. ring. These yeah. girls look like the ring. See, they reminded me of the little girls off The Shining. Yes, that too. <laughs> Come play with us. I was like, yeah, no, I'm not. That too. That um, too. They just knew a lot about chickens. Mm -hmm. um, I could tell they didn't get a lot of outside um, influence. Maybe spent a lot of time with the chickens at home. Didn't have a yeah. whole lot of play dates. Um, Except with their... Uh, Wyamets, that was Windon Windonets, Windonets, which is that kind, that beautiful chicken, that black and white chicken. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Another thing that I don't think um, Brian from Branson realizes is that he's got something in common with my husband, and that's a that's an eye for fashion. Did you see that holographic button down? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, Brian, yes, you were bullied in high school because you have such 
confidence now that you can wear whatever you want to. Whatever you want. And who cares? Carry yep. chicken in your pocket. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to bring you down, Brian, and I love you for it. No, he is, um, yeah, he definitely, so when you start hearing about Brian and how he was bullied in high school, and I believe it. Oh, yeah. I believe it. I believe it because he is, I mean, I don't know how old he is. He's got to be in his mid thirties. He's just very eccentric. And, and I could tell, like, artistic. that would have been what the, the uh, early nineties when he was in high school. And that was not a very woke time in our world. Uh-uh. And so I'm sure he was bullied for being feminine and, and let for some, singing and, and let some young man say, I raise cocks. <laughs> <laughs> You're dead on arrival. the nicknames I mean I have a beautiful name and I got made fun of not gonna tell you what they are because I still heart deep but uh hello my name is Amaryllis I mean I went to let's just say that I was the minority at my school and so my nickname was Thacker Cracker (laughs) in elementary school (laughs) so I had to change schools so you had to change schools Yes. Well, I was Amaryllis, mm-hmm. Armadillo, oh. Amaryllis, Amarilla, Amarillo. I love Amaryllis. Morelli. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, people call me Amaryllis all the time. Also paid my pants in second grade and they called me Misty Pisty. <laughs> that had to have something to do with why you had to change schools. Yeah. That had to have something. Yeah. But I, how about I didn't let them know I did it? I thought, well, this sidewalk is warm enough that I can dry this right up. And this so, this reminds me that you've told me that you've peed your pants before. I did pee my pants. So it was it was it first seems to be a medical problem. Well, it was first or second grade. Well, I do it now because I've had big headed kids. But <laughs> before it was pure stress, and I didn't want to stop playing to go to the bathroom. And so I peed my pants, and I thought, well, this is a problem. But in my little first grade mind, I thought if I pretend like. I didn't do this. People will catch on. Like, if you're confident enough about something, people sure. will follow you, right? Yeah. And also, it was a hot summer day, which didn't probably didn't help with the aroma. But <laughs> <laughs> I thought to myself, if I sit on this warm sidewalk and I rub around a little bit. Stop it. It will dry my pants. Correct? Um, I mean, that's just, that's just thinking, okay? Okay. I'm but not sure. But I, I did have. not think to myself, well, these are are baby pink pants and this is a dirty sidewalk and so when I stood up I just had a dirt spot where all my pee was but I put myself in line like one does yeah and of course children were laughing and pointing and I was just I acted like I just was like oh what are we laughing at yeah. and so I, <laughs> I laughed too and so my my teacher came up to me and said um Misty do you need to go to um the restroom or can I help you and I said no <laughs> she, Why would you say And that? she was like, did you have an accident? And I was like, did you have an accident? No, Stop. I didn't have an accident. And she was like, well, the back of your pants. And I was like, I mean, it looks like everybody's pants are dirty. We've all been playing. So I don't understand what the did problem is. Did you really is. say that? I said everybody's pants are dirty. And she said, oh. well, not like yours. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell the difference, Misty. And then I began to cry, and she had to take me to change my pants. But I was real. Next thing you know, I was real upset school. with her because I thought, really? You got to call me out in line? You she did it in line? Oh, yeah. It was the 80s, girl. They didn't care. Oh, they didn't care. They are like, hey, pee-pee pants. Come get out of line. <laughs> hey, you idiot. Great. I got to change your clothes. <laughs> yeah. So I cried, and I was so upset, and then they called me Misty Pisty. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Pissy. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. That's why I have such a good personality now. You had to compensate. Yeah, but I still pee myself sometimes because those big-headed kids. Yeah, those if kids you call ruin everything. Or oh, if I'm you there now. Jump, I'm there now. Forget it. You're oh, wet. It's awful. Yeah, forget it's it. It's awful. Anyway, yeah. um, but speaking of chickens, speaking of chickens, <laughs> but can I tell you my favorite fun fact about chickens that I learned from this documentary? What's that? And that's that chickens have certain, like they have their own language, and so apparently, if you're a chicken person, after a while, you learn what your chicken is trying to say to you. Oh, I did see that. And I thought, well, that's a lot like me because I I make certain noises mm-hmm. and each one of them means something different. And so, like, I'm sure Philip can tell right away. Um, and I feel like you've been with me long enough. Maybe you can distinguish. Decipher, yeah. Do you want me to do some? Oh, I'm nervous. Okay, I'm going to do. Keep in mind, my whole family's asleep. Oh, I know. They're not loud. They're okay. real inconspicuous. Okay. So, like, if I'm just sitting there and I go, <sighs> And I curl my lips up. What does that mean? Annoyed. 
no, it's more in depth than that. Bored, annoyed. That means I wish you would offer me food or offer to go get me food. Oh, <laughs> well, I see. So you know, I don't know that sound because I always preemptively offer. You me actually food. always offer me food. Yes, I, I always either have something cooked or baked, and I just always will give it to you. Um, another one might be. <clears throat> <clears throat> that one means shut up. Exactly. That yeah. means let's talk about something I want to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I have heard that one many times. And then my last one is clearly for Philip, and it's, oh. Oh, I am got a headache. I would love to go to TJ Maxx. <laughs> <laughs> so chickens are a lot like us, which I didn't know. So, you know. Okay. What fun fact did you learn about chickens? Oh, gosh. Did it make you want to own chickens? It kind of made me want some it chickens did. a little bit. Listen, I know a lady here in town that I met this summer. You She's, get chicken eggs. She keeps me in chicken eggs. I'm scared to eat them. I'm scared I'm going to crack one and a bird will fall out. I'm sure they've been candled. I so. don't know. <laughs> Why don't you get you a flashlight so you can candle it before you open it? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So she, there's a, yeah, there's a lady, a friend of mine, and she, uh, she just had a baby so I uh, will not be getting my eggs for a while because oh, kids no. ruin everything. Oh, gosh. Um, I, actually, she makes her older boys go out and get the eggs for me. Um, so she's got a bunch of – she's got a, a coop. That's a house, crazy. And she'll say – It um, looks fun, doesn't it? It does, but – I mean, I don't want to get pecked by but chicken. But all I can think of is all that chicken poop. Oh, it's And stink. how gross it is. Yeah. I would love, I would love my own eggs all the time because I love a farm pastured. Well, and if I egg. had some in one diet, it would just have to, to go where it laid because I wouldn't pick it up. You know, we had a kitten die of one of our litters last year. It was awful. I know. I'm scarred. Yeah, it was terrible. Just hearing about it. It was terrible. It was terrible, and we watched it take its last breath. So it was just farm horrific. life is tough. Yeah, huh? Farm, farm life, life is, is tough. tough. So I would love the farm pastured eggs, but at this point, I'm just going to let my friend have the hen house. Yeah, they make pretty eggs, though. Yes, she get. In it's fact, I like used some tonight in, in the food, in the in the meatballs. Um, mm. Like they come in real tiny, or they'll come jumbo sized. Yeah, it just depends. And how about Brian from Branson will get real ticked off if you lay an egg right before he's about to show you? Oh gosh, he said, "Well, this one did it on the floor." Well, laying an egg is not pretty. And then this one laid an egg, and now i got to wipe it off with a wet wipe. There's a lady on TikTok. I like to doom scroll on TikTok. Oh, me too. Even though I'm a 50-year-old woman. Yeah. Y'all, we about to open up our TikTok. Oh, well, we keep saying that, but we haven't. I'm going to. Are you going to do it for sure? I promise you, but okay. you have to teach me how to get the sounds. Go ahead. <laughs> I told you I'm a visual learner. Okay. 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 Um, so, I, I, somehow, it came up on my For You page. And it's this woman who's got this chicken, and I can't remember the term that she used, but it's when an, a hen is trying to lay an egg and it's stuck. Constipated. No, it's not called constipated. There's another word for it. But it could mean also that the egg has actually cracked inside her. <gasps> and so that's, that could cause death. Really? Yes. And so she's got this chicken. She's holding this giant chicken, and she has got it in her bathroom sink. <coughs> And she has gloves on because she's having to clean its butt. And you can see the poop water Ugh. in her sink at home. No, ma'am. There were like eight videos of updates on the stupid chicken. What have you been watching on TikTok to make I them put know. that in your you know, for you feed? But, you know, our phones hear everything. So I'm sure that it found out that I was watching chicken people. Oh, when it came yeah, out for chickens. sure. For sure. Yeah, it was gross. It was so gross. Yeah, I didn't realize how many. Just, you know what, just so you know, the chicken's okay. And oh. it laid the egg. So well, I know I'll be you able to worried. sleep tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but no, I didn't know eggs get stuck in chicken's butts. Yes, they do. Also, eggs come from chicken butts. <sighs> Gross. I know. I do have a real fear every time I crack open an egg that a baby chicken's going to fall out. You ever heard of balut? Yes. Is that what you're scared of? Would you ever eat it? Never. Gross. Never. You have to eat the bones and the beak. It's disgusting. And the feathers. I mean, it's just another form of protein, I guess, but it's yeah. gross. That's why I can never go on Survivor, and also I don't like to get in natural bodies of water. Oh, really? You don't like the ocean? I'm scared of fish. I don't like the ocean either. I'm just scared of I don't of like any... sand. I like mountains. Better. I don't want to be in water where I can't see the bottom. I don't want to be yeah. in water where there's an animal in it or a rock or so a piece. So when you go to the beach, what do you do? I sit on the sand. You don't get in the ocean at all? No. God, that would mess up my swimsuit. <laughs> Not doing that. 
There are sharks in that water. There are. You know what? My sister lives in Orange Beach. I feel like we've given so much personal information today. But my sister lives down <laughs> in Orange Beach. And she constantly says, you know where the sharks live, right? Right there. Oh, yeah. Right at the... Right there. Yeah. That's where they are. Uh-uh. So I'm I can't not a, do it. I, I've never enjoyed being at the beach. And if, I don't like how hot it is. I don't like sand. Here's what I love. I love the beach, and I love taking pictures on the beach, and I love sitting on the beach, and I love putting my chair right where the water comes up to my feet mm-hmm. and listening to podcasts. And mm-hmm. now I can listen to us, which would be even better. <laughs> even better. Um, but my husband just has to take our children out in the ocean water. And so my anxiety hits yeah. a peak to where I start screaming they're going to die. They're going to die. I see a hammerhead. I, I see, see a hammerhead. Hammer the waves are too high. And nothing delights my family more than to send me into a full-blown panic attack oh. where I grab my umbrella and I go back up to the condo. Because oh. I'm like, if y'all are going to die, you're going to die alone. That's perfect. Because I'm not doing it. Yeah. You're not going to see me on the news. Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. Because you're going back and you're collecting that insurance. At Absolutely. Somebody's got to carry on the name. Somebody has to. And I've got this podcast. I have people counting on me. <laughs> tens and tens You're, and hundreds. You got off the dock to populate. Absolutely. <laughs> I have a plan, okay, and a future. All right. So, um, you know, what's interesting is they had the Ohio Nationals, which was like the big chicken show. It got canceled because there was an avian flu pandemic. Bird flu. And, um, yeah, bird flu. And I thought to myself, and then they were like, okay, well, we're not, we can't do Ohio, so we've got to pivot, so we're going to Knoxville. Right. And I thought to myself, this is exactly like what we have going on today. Um, Everybody up north of the Mason-Dixon line is like, we've got to shut it down. And everybody south of the Mason-Dixon line doesn't care. We have all the shows. (laughs) We're like, come on down. Come to Tennessee. (laughs) You ain't got to wear your mask. You ain't got to bathe your chickens. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to just come on down. And we got free appetizers for everybody (laughs) to put their hands in. (laughs) to not care bathe your chicken and have a pig in a blanket yeah so i i thought it was funny that it was like the more things change the more things stay the same yeah um also i was really interested to learn about chicken sex oh it's chicken sex that's what brian said chicken sex it's chicken sex yeah. it's very quick it's done so fast <laughs> so fast my favorite too was when <laughs> when that when that sherry when that sherry started doing like the sex dance that the chicken does, that the <laughs> rooster does. She's, she's like, like, it's like this. It's like it's this. So she's waving a wing. It's like, and one, and then she's going out. in circles. Mm-hmm. And if I'll be danged if it wasn't the exact same dance that rooster did. She did such a great impersonation <laughs> of that chicken dance. It was chicken porn. We were watching it was full on chicken porn. Well, and I loved it how she was like. Or maybe it was Brates and Brian said, so here's how they get their ladies. Like, they'll find a piece of food or a worm or something, and then they'll let out this signal that yeah. says, hey, I found food. And all the ladies come running because you got to give them dinner first, right? Yeah, yeah. Dinner or a movie. And then um, as soon as they come to eat, he just hops right on. And then he's done in five seconds. Can you imagine if you were like, hey, Rhett, dinner's ready, and you couldn't even turn your back? <laughs> Honestly, how it is. I'd be, <laughs> it's how it is at my house. I'd be like, you're going to have to go get McDonald's because I can't be handling this in, at 6 o'clock. Okay? No. They, that, no. But that woman dancing, the mating dance The mating was dance. Amazing. And she liked to call her men stud muffins. Yes. The man chickens. Yes. The, what are they called? Silkies. No, the, like a man chicken. A rooster. A man chicken? Yeah. <laughs> And the rooster. It's the a rooster. And the rooster. It's a rooster. You know what I've decided we need to do if this podcast does not work out? We need to go to chicken shows. We need to set up a booth where we sell ibuprofen for the headaches from the sound in oh, there. Yeah. Um, Febreze. Febreze. Uh-huh. Um, ear stoppers. Mm-hmm. Ear plugs. And um, hand sanitizer. A bath towel. Hand, something. <laughs> a wet nap. I mean, we would make millions. Yeah. Because I thought, where is the Advil tent? I could not make it in there. All I could think of was the smell in this place. Good grief. I can't even. I would have been like on Silence of the Lambs when they put that stuff under their nose. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they could not smell the corpse. Totally. Uh Uh-uh. I'd have to have some Vicks or something right up underneath. I'd have to have COVID to walk in there to not be able to smell anything. Sure 
enough. That's actually a strategy if it, we go. It really yeah. is. I mean, I thought to my and they look like they, they've got to spend hours there. Oh, well, they get nose blindness. I, I mean, they can't, they can't possibly smell. You know, they, they're so used to it. Brett says that about our cats. He's like, do you think when Misty walks in here, she can smell our cats? No, because I'm coming directly out of a cat house. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also have that disease. Do you know what a cat house is? It's a euphemism for a whorehouse. Well, depends on what you think of me. <laughs> I've been called worse. I said, we don't have, it doesn't stink because my mother would tell me in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Well, here's what I love is when, if I do walk in and I ever, because I have a very sensitive nose. Like, if it smelled here, girl, when I came in, I'd be like, I brought you something. And it'd be like potpourri. Um, well, you did walk in and say, it smells like you've been making shrimp. Oh, it did. And it was it, it was, was Greek meatballs. But, but it still smelled great. <laughs> um, but I have a real sensitive nose. And so, like, even if I walk into our own house and I'm like, ooh, like, we need to change the litter or something. Yeah. Philip will be like, no, we do not. He gets very he gets offended. Mad at you. Oh yes, he does not like for me to say something doesn't smell good. He'll get very offended. He gets that um, yeah. scent bird every month. And scent bird? It's a perfume, monthly perfume <laughs> subscription. What in the world is scent bird? It is a monthly perfume subscription. Okay. And so they send you little vials of monthly perfumes. Well, like he, for humans, body yeah, perfume. Yeah. Okay. So he gets a cologne every month. I gotcha. I got you. Is he trying to attract the ladies or something? What is he trying to do? And he's trying to attract me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um, certain ones will do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a certain scent, and I know you know this scent because you do oils, bergamot. Uh-huh. I cannot, it smells like mold to me. Really? I cannot smell it. Like, it is so. Oh, bergamot's so yummy. Gross. It's floral or citrusy. It is so gross to me. Bergamot and um, vetiver. Like, oh, it is, gross. it, it revolts me. And patchouli, I don't like patchouli either. Patchouli's gross. Rhett loves some vetiver. Um, but it revolts me. And so, on the cards, when they send these scents, like, it'll have all the ingredients. And finally, I told them, I said, you're going to have to quit getting that with that bergamot in it. Because it just, it runs me <laughs> it's, off. It's doing the opposite of what you need. It's making me want to go to bed alone. <laughs> so. Now, at this chicken show, show, there was some danger. There was a huge announcement. And they said... There's a loose chicken. <laughs> Please capture it and bring it to the office. <laughs> if you say it, catch it and bring There's it to the office. There's a loose chicken. Please capture it and bring it to the office. There's yeah. danger. There is danger everywhere you turn. I bet they've said that about Nova at school. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm laughing because it's probably true. There's a loose first grader. It's Can y'all grab true. it? We can't find her anywhere. We can't find her anywhere. If you smell some stolen perfume and yes. hear the hear the sound of some stolen follow beads, the crumbs, follow she'll it be there. and the snack, she'll be there. Follow the cookie crumbs, she'll be there. She's probably left a note that she'll be back soon. All right, so in the end, in the end, Brian from Branson also, did you love Brian Bran Brian from Branson's? He was wearing a lab coat. Lab coat. <laughs> <laughs> when he was like, I can't believe they didn't like that chicken. It was too perfect can't believe it but you know what i love my chickens whether they win or not i can't believe this i spent 14 dollars at monogram plus to get this lab coat <laughs> monogram with my chicken on it and here we are a full-on lab coat like doctor full chicken. length yeah yeah like dr chicken chicken doctor yeah. uh okay so his chickens um did not make the cut and um now i thought brian brian the engineer was gonna he won he didn't win best in show but he won best in breed yeah he did right yeah, for did. those really beautiful black and white chickens. Oh, those, whatchamacallits. Yeah, those, now those look juicy and delicious. They did look delicious. <laughs> they look so yummy. Oh, my goodness. They looked delicious. Because they look like, and I guess But can you eat feathers. all chickens? Or can I you mean, all, I don't know it's why kinda you like, couldn't. Well, think about fish. There's some fish you can't eat. No, there's not. I mean, a, there's only one fish that I can a think of. A puffer fish will yeah, kill you. That's the only one. And another fish. <laughs> Surely there's some more fish in the well, ocean you can eat. It's the fish, and then there's another one. There is another one. Electric eel will shock you. But you can eat eel. I'm not. Rhett has eaten eel before. Gross. He loves sushi. He loves raw sushi. I love sushi, too. Do you love raw sushi? Sashimi? Not raw. No. He will eat sashimi. He will eat I like a California roll. Uh-uh. No offense to my Asian brothers and sisters, but, ugh, but gross. Thank you. 
Give me cooked sushi. Those I will cavemen eat that because that's basically rice and shrimp. Created fire for a reason. Yes. Yes. Um, okay, so Brian did not get on Champion Row because that was the one that the chicken was too perfect. He doesn't care. That was the one that, yeah. So then Brian from Branson, he didn't win anything. And guess who goes home with the whole shebang? Our girl Sherry. Our girl Sherry. Also, she this is it. how much Sherry loves her chickens, let me tell you. This is how much she loves her chickens. Mm-hmm. She's got a big barn mm-hmm. at her house, mm-hmm. and her um, one of her teenage boys was on the roof. Mm-hmm. And she says, get off that roof. You're really bothering the chickens. Couldn't give a dang about whether he fell off the roof or not. She was worried about her silkies. Well, let me tell which you. Which I guess was a good move because they won the whole Knoxville show. Well, with that many chickens, she has to be up from day till night. I don't think she's got a day job. No, she's a homemaker. Okay. She's a but homemaker. She's a chicken maker. She cause, bored because her kids are all grown. Because she up in that chicken coop all day uh-huh. long. Yeah, she likes to sit in the chicken coop. I don't know if you saw that. I was about to throw up. We need to introduce her to Christy from the um, Fight Before Christmas. Oh, oh yes, from the Fight Before Christmas. You know who I was th- yeah. I thought you were going to say from the Beanie Babies. Uh, oh, no, 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 From no, the no. Beanie Babies uh, Museum. No, uh-uh. But Sherry looked like she needed an need outside friend she as well. She needed a friend. She mm-hmm. needed a friend, yeah. I mean, she is friends with that lady who was at, the, girlfriend. was at the chicken show. No. Oh, yes, the other lady. That other one yes. that said her kid said she liked chicken when she woke up in the yes. morning. Yes, yes, yes. And how about some of those people did look like their chickens? Yeah. Did you notice Well, that, that was one of the questions they asked them. Do you look like your chickens? Mm-hmm. And some of them said, well, yeah. Brian's girlfriend straight up looked like his chickens. She looked like a silky. I thought, well, that's why you're dating her. Does she like, you think she looked like a silky or a brema? Uh, I did I th- not know that I would know this many. I think she looked like that chicken breeds. That chicken dot ones that he breeds. The wine dots. The wine, wine, wine dots. Wine dots. Yeah, I yeah. don't even know if I'm saying it right. Yeah. I, well, I think I'm saying it right, but I would never know how to spell it. How about I was excited to figure out why um, that cartoon chicken's name is um, Foghorn Leghorn. Yes, thank you very much. Because he's a leghorn. <laughs> he's a leghorn. I was and like, he talked really loud. And he talked real loud. Yes. And he was southern. Yes. Oh. Yes, I had no idea that leghorn was a type of chicken. Thank you, chicken people. Thank you. You, now, you know what? You asked me what I learned. I oh, learned yeah. that leghorn is a type of chicken. That's right. Foghorn yeah. leghorn. Yeah. No, it did not win best of breed. It's the silky. Mm. The white silky won it. That silky because did it. apparently chicken people are racist. Well, and not even because amaryllis. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. That took you a second to get. <laughs> it did take me a minute. Too soon. Um... But not because of how beautiful she was, but because she could stand right. Oh, yes. Yep. Look at it just stand the way it's supposed to. Right. How about I'd never stand? Well, what was standing. funny is it was going back and forth between her and Brian. Like, the, the judge was like, I don't know if I'm going to give it to the wine dot or if I'm going to get it to the silky. The wine dot. Now, this silk, this wine dot, to my naked eye, is perfection. It is gorgeous oh, yeah it looks yeah. like it looks like a painting it looks like a stuffed animal made with precision precision and stitching. the pattern on it gorgeous gorgeous and the great head on it yes and so the guy goes i think it could stand to be more perfect so i think <laughs> you're not to the silky how about these poor chickens are probably like go ahead and cut my head off because i can't do it for y'all what do i need to do for you people? how many more eggs do i need to lay how many how? more times must i molt these feathers how much more definition in my feathers do you want? I mean, my cone could not be straighter. It couldn't. They can't win. Okay. Well, there you have it. There you have it. Now we've learned all about chicken people. Yes. I kind of love them. I kind of love them too. <laughs> like when we first, when I first looked at it, because you had mentioned it to me before I mentioned it again, and you were like, this chicken people, and I was like, I don't care about no chickens. <laughs> but... <laughs> You always say that about the stuff that I pick out. I know. Like, I do not want to watch that. I'm like, I don't want to watch that. And then somebody, I saw several people post about it on Facebook. Like, we're about to really? watch it. Yeah. They were like, I'm about to watch Chicken People. And I was like, oh, I guess that's okay. And so I was like, well, if people are watching it, I guess we need to watch it. Well, I haven't seen that. That's um, that's funny. Yeah. So, but, um, you know, we've got quite a number of docs to cover yes. this coming season. We've got some good ones and some we new do. ones coming out. Mm-hmm. You know what I heard? There was a new one coming out in Hulu. I don't know when it's coming out, but you yeah. can bet that I will be the first person to watch it. Oh, yeah. It is about Jerry Falwell Jr. Oh. and that whole thing where he had a threesome or a, not a threesome, a polyamory relationship 
with oh, that guy. Yeah. And that young kid in Florida and his wife was like, anyway. Well, whatever. you know, I want nothing more than to do Tammy Faye and Jim Baker, but we if can't find we the can't documentary find anywhere. anywhere. Now, I've seen it. And if yeah. worse comes to worse, Amaryllis, people speak out how much you want us to do this. If worse comes to worse, I've seen the documentary and you will watch the movie that is based on the documentary and we'll just do it. I, okay. So Misty wants to do this. I want to go on record. I'm not crazy about I've this I've said idea. it five different times <laughs> how much I want to do it. No, I want to do it too. I just don't want to do it based on the movie. I know. And I want you to see the documentary. I have seen the documentary. But it's been years. It's been a long time since I've seen it. You son of a gun. I have seen it. Did you think I had not seen it? I feel like you've lied to me. <laughs> Why would I want to I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you want to do it, Amaryllis? I do. I just don't want to do it on the movie because the movie takes liberties. She had lip liner and eyeliner. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what? We need to commit to you doing a makeup tutorial to look like Tammy on Patreon. Done. Done and done. Done and done. <laughs> okay. And done. <laughs> Done and done. And I will go to one of Avery's basketball games dressed in Tammy Faye makeup. Uh, okay. Okay. Done. And done. I'm fired up about that. Let's do it. I'm fired up about that. Once we reach 1,000 Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. These, that was a, that was a, that was a they, late caveat. Comment. They don't give away these big lot card tables for free. No, they do not. So to keep this good thing going, we got to get this some machine, help. This machine requires a lot. It requires gas, y'all. It requires a lot. No, we're so. also going to do, we're going to do that Queen of Versailles. Yeah. Like has been suggested a couple of times. Misty yeah. has not seen that one, but it's a crazy one. Now there's an update on that one that's kind of tragic, but. Well, don't tell me. Really, I, I won't. I won't tell you, I but it's really an interesting it's that that lady. I don't can't think of her name, but the Queen of Versailles. That lady is yeah. something else. And I want to do that documentary on that girl that talked that kid into killing himself. Yes, I lo- I love you. Now kill yourself. Now, now die. Now I die. love you. Now die. Yeah. Right? Have you seen it, it? Yes, I've seen it. I followed that story when it first came out. Me too. Yeah. Oh, the craziness. Yeah. Yeah, I want to do that one. Okay. There's a lot of I've I've got a lot I want to. I do. I want to do Misha and the Wolves. I want to do that one it's too. It's just um, it's kind of a serious one. Do only smart people watch that one? No, no. It's just it, the backdrop of it is the Holocaust, mm-hmm. and you know, I, I I don't I don't ever want to be put in a position where people think we're making fun of the Holocaust. Oh gosh, me neither. And but it's such crazy stuff that this woman did to just she to pretend that she was somebody else so i mean look we have to find humor somewhere yeah Yeah, exactly i mean so so we got a list we got it well yeah and hey send us another voicemail we love those i mean we're kind of jealous that y'all might have better voices than (laughs) us (laughs) i mean might is uh they will have better voice we are not i mean listen i know that we have stumbled upon this as you know complete this is not training, for heaven's sake. My voice is music to the ear. Okay. A lot of people tell me that they love my accent. And a lot of other people say they love yours. Yes. I think when you say your um, other language. Spanish? Yes. <laughs> it's a, it's a when you roll, very... When you roll those R's, that's how you got rent. <laughs> <laughs> He asked me to do that pretty regularly. I bet he does. Yeah. Yep. Have I ever done the... And his name's... Have Hedrick. I ever done the limerick with the R's in Spanish No, for you? please do it. It is a Spanish limerick You're that I learned this as one a little for girl. Free. And uh, it, it says, R con R cigarro, R con R barril, rápido van los carros del ferrocarril. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a nonsensical limerick in Spanish. Those are real words, but it's nonsensical lyric. And, is um, that kind of like Miss Susie had a steamboat? Yeah, a steamboat yeah, yeah, yeah. Had a it's bell. just a limerick. Yeah. So, um, but it's funny because there are plenty of children that haven't learned to roll their R's yet, or you lose your teeth, your front teeth, and it's hard to do that. So they'll be like, or Americans. You know, I you can know do Americans it. can't do it. Yes, I can. You can? Tell me something to say with a Say carro. 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 Oh, yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But a lot of Americans can't do it, and so they're like, carro, carro, You know, they're like, so it cracks us up. Well, Southern is such a sensual language. It is. That I've learned to use my tongue. 
in a lot of ways. <laughs> and so it's not hard for me to roll R's. All right. Well, I don't know what we're doing next because we like to change it. And we like to keep y'all guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Misty. Listen. All right. Thank y'all for listening. Do we have any shout outs, by the way? I'm pretty sure I do, but I can't remember. Oh, shout and I feel out! Really bad. Shout out to my friend Coach Blake. He was real offended when we talked. <gasps> oh, I forgot about Coach Blake. When we talked about our friend Benji being yeah. a trendsetter, Coach Blake was one of the first men. He was the first. Well, he, he and Mark. He and Mark were the first ones. And then we got. And Mike he's still Benji. an avid listener. And thank you, Coach. Thank Blake. you, Coach Blake. Like you give us hope that the that the public school system is doing something right yes you know not even our husbands listen to this mess mm. they want no part of it and coach blake's super hip and cool so thank you coach blake he's in the know you're making this old lady feel good for show for show uh okay right. there you have it bye bye